There is a program that's working with farmers and ranchers to try to get them to stop targeting the cheetahs, which go after their livestock, and that seems to be working. Yes, uh, it, it's a very interesting program. Actually, it's the Cheetah Conservation Funds in Namibia. Uh, they started the Anatolian Shepherd. It's a Turkish Anatolian Shepherd. It's a, it's a breed of dog um, that's always been used to protect livestock. So basically, this dog is given to the ranchers or farmers as a puppy, and the puppy will bond with the livestock. And this dog will protect that livestock with his life. And we're talking a big dog, like it's about 100 to 150, depending if it's a male or female. And this is natural for that dog. I mean, this dog will go between what he considered a danger, a danger mm -hmm. and the livestock. Most predators, even lions and leopards and hyenas, if they see there's a competition or there's something that will provide them to go to that livestock, 90% of the time they'll walk away because it, it's too much of a risk for them to get hurt to get to the livestock, you know, so they'll just keep going and find some, you know, a different prey to hunt. Um, so that dog, just the present, the presence of the dog scares them off. Scares most of them off. And the ones, the predators that will keep going are usually older animals or sick animals mm. or injured animal. And most of the time, the dog will be able to run that predator away. Mm. So um, this dog is awesome. I mean, this is not a house dog. and yeah. <laughs> It's not the These type of dog. Dogs, yes. They are guard dogs. They are protected. You know, they protect livestock. That's their life and they will die doing it. So they will put themselves in danger before letting that predator to that you know, go through the livestock. So it's been well received by farmers and ranchers. The program has proved, you know, proved itself. So now the word is getting out there. So the more and more ranchers and farmers want to be involved with the dog. So the more you get dog out there, well, they leave the cheetahs alone because they will allow cheetah to roam and walk around and stay around the farmland uh, because they feel comfortable that they won't go after the livestock. So it's kind of a compromise, you know, like we'll compromise, we'll, we'll allow cheetahs to stay here as long as my livestock is okay. Right. And it works both, you know, it works for, you know, the humans, it works for the livestock <laughs> and it works for the cheetahs. So it, I think it's a very good way to learn how to live with wildlife. So it is an awesome program. <laughs> is loss of habitat the biggest threat to the yes, cheetah? Yes, definitely, definitely. Is. Because cheetahs, as we all know, they are the fastest. Uh, land mammal. 70, 70, 75 on Yeah, it, on and a a very day. short. <laughs> well, sprints, yeah. So it's a, they are sprinter cats, so yes, they can't do it for a long time, but they will give it all <laughs> in that two minutes. Yes. Um, so you can imagine they need savanna, they need plains, yeah. uh, they can't be in very um, foresty areas or things like that because at the speed they go they can't have too many trees and in, in the way and things like that so that's why they, they do very well on farmlands because it's open space right. um, unfortunately those spaces are usually used for agri agricultures um, and when you start putting them into national reserve which are protected you know it's a bit crowded for cheetahs. I mean, they are the weakest of the predators. So, you know, everything from even baboons, leopards, spotted hyenas, lions, this is, they all are much stronger, much, fa not faster, but much stronger uh, and powerful over the cheetah. So the poor cheetah is just trying to do his thing. <laughs> But he will get his food stolen, you know, mm. those, those predators will come and steal cheetah food. Even vultures, if you have a lot of vultures, they will, some of them are able to get away, you know, to get a cheetah to back away from a, a kill. Mm. Uh, very hard, I mean, they have a hard time with cubs to get to cubs to adulthood. So when you put them into a situation which is a lot, it's a, a lot of pressure on the cheetah, most of those cubs, in certain areas of Africa, 90% of cubs don't make it. So 90%, it's a lot. 
and it's usually killed by lions, mm -hmm. killed by hyenas, killed by a jackal because cubs are that big either when they're small. So just a jackal coming around and whoop, you know is gonna he's gonna kill the, the cubs. Uh, so they need that space, and unfortunately, that's what they don't have anymore. And it's down to about seven thousand yes. worldwide, the estimate. Yes. And wild one yes for many that's getting to the levels of being close to extinction and yes. they're they're really pushing for them to be classified as endangered yes. not just threatened yes i think uh, because right now they're vulnerable if you want because the cap there's a nice population in captivity um and the last year with the CCF in Namibia, they take on a lot of orphans, reintroduce and things like that. So there's a stability in Namibia, okay, with cheetahs. And South Africa, they're okay. You know, South Africa, the problem is they're all in national parks. So th again, it's the same problem. There's too much pressure on the cheetah to, to be able to really um, make it and, you know, next generation to come around. And, um, so they are there. Like there's a lot of talk and a lot of pressure to, to get them to that next level. Uh, unfortunately, it's not going to change much because the problem is they need the air, <laughs> they need the space, um, and not just the space, but you need the food. Uh, you can have a lot of farmlands, but if you don't allow grazers, which are you know for cheetahs will be a lot of the younger gazelle and gazelle mm -hmm. and if you if you don't allow the grazer to come on your land then the cheetahs don't have anything to eat so this is all like it's an ecosystem so if you allow one you need to allow the other one um so that's what they really need at the moment is just to have areas just to be able to live and that that's the biggest of the issues for them um, and we see it now with lions lions are getting to that point too and you know it's very sad when you think that african lions are in that situation hmm. They are one of the iconic yeah. African species, um, and they are getting to the same point, so it's very sad. <laughs> and home for most of them is Africa. Yes, That's yes. Uh, cheetahs, uh, if we go back in history, um, we had cheetahs here, a different subspecies, um, but it was cheetahs right here. Um, they are one of the oldest cat that we have still today. Mm. Um, but they were found everywhere in, the, in this world. Really? Even North different, America? Yeah, different really? adaptation. Like you have like, let's say in the family tree, you can have like the cheetah and then you can have a sub uh, subspecies. So we had subspecies mm. here. Um, but we still have a very tiny little population in Asia, which is 50 individuals in Ir uh, Iran. Uh, 50 is considered instinct because it's not enough to, mm -hmm. you know, uh, sustain a nice population but they're still there I mean uh, but yes right now it's basically Africa <laughs> and a cool part about your job is you get to travel to these places yes. you, you you've seen cheetahs in the wild yes yes and you get to travel around the world part of it is it is the network where you share cheetahs for breeding but part of it is also you 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 get to go to these areas where yes where it's home to these animals yes and I think for any keepers or anybody that will work with wildlife, I think to understand the animals you're working with, the best way to do it is go to their homeland <laughs> if you want. Go and see the reality of things. There's things that it's hard to see and, and to be witnessed. Um, but there's another side that it's also also like it, it's wonderful to see because when you see a cheetah hunting and have a proper kill because most of the time they miss it but when you get to that hunt that they finally get it it's wonderful um to see and if there's cubs when you you hear the mother calling for you know calling for the cubs and just how it's you know it's meant to be it's wonderful it, and this is how you can actually understand that species and what they need and what's important to them and why do they do this? Like why why does cheetah be like like cubs have that fluffy thing going, you know? Like <laughs> it's not a fashion statement. Um, it's really like cheetah mothers just give birth in high grass. They don't den, you know, they don't hide, they don't do anything. So now you understand when you see cheetah cubs, 
they're about a feet away from you. You don't even see them because they, 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 they're so well camouflaged with their fluff, <laughs> you know, and they, they won't move. I mean, until mom is around, they won't move. Um, so they just like, they stay still and they just, so it's, I think it's very important for all of us to be able to experience our animals where, you know, they're meant to be, because that's what you learn from that. You can try to do in captivity. Um, obviously, it'll never be the wild in captivity, but there's a lot of things, just the way you make the enclosure and anyway, the, the different, different area. But yes, I mean, I love traveling, but for me, it's not just traveling, it's culture and to see the wildlife and to see the scenery and everything that is awesome. 